So good to be home. Really good to be home with a win. Uh, tough trip. Hard to get there. Hard to get back. Really proud of how the guys responded and and kind of blocked out the way the trip goes and, and all the distractions of everything that Waikiki has to offer. I mean, you're, you're right there in downtown on the beach. There's people everywhere. And a little bit more time on our hands than normal when you when you consider the early travel. Night game, long wait. But um, but the guys, they, they did, did what we need them to do. We, we didn't play perfectly, but we played well in some areas, uh, made stops when we needed to, found ways to get the ball in the end zone, get, get a few guys involved that hadn't had a lot of touches here lately and, and proved to be enough and another big play in special teams. So proud, uh, proud of the guys to get a win. We got back late on Sunday, uh, you know, Sunday, 2 o'clock. So that's, that's not a normal return trip for us either. We'll focus on getting guys rested up uh, yesterday afternoon, today, and then get right back to work with a tough challenge with San Jose coming for a late night Saturday night game. This is a big game for us. We we have talked, been very open about our uh, desire to to get this team to a bowl, become bowl eligible, keep that you know kind of get that streak rolling, and and that's something that that we know is on the table this week. And to stay in relative and and relevant in the uh, in the league, you know, just trying to be in the mix in any way possible, even if it's just a share of something. I think any of those goals are, are, are things that we want to continue to strive for. So we'll work hard this week and prepare to, you know, have a great night on senior night. We've got a really good class, 11 guys that have done a great job battling for us, and we're, we're proud of them. We, wanna, we want to make sure we, you know, have a night that they remember, and that's, that's going to be difficult again. San Jose's a really good football team. This will be a big challenge for us. So what questions do you have? Coach Jason Walker with Cash Valley Daily. Um, seems like your teams have a knack for making big plays on defense, and you know, in, in timely situations, even when the defense maybe hasn't had a great day, they seem to make the big play at the end of the game. Uh, you know, to help win. Like, you know, what's that like been for your defense to have that kind of uh, ability? Yeah, I think um, you know this. The resiliency of that group. You're right. We didn't have a great night, just statistically speaking. Struggle to get them stopped, struggle to put them away. Got to give them credit. I, I thought they just kind of stuck with it, even though we were creating a tremendous amount of pressure. They stuck with their plan and and kept putting the ball in the air. And quarterback did a great job checking the ball down, even though he kept getting dinged and, and, and hit, um, finding guys open. But when we had to have plays, we, we made them. Uh, the, you know, Ike had a big game, obviously, but the pressure up front, even though there weren't a lot of stats, we got to the quarterback and made him really uncomfortable most of the night. We made some very big plays in one-on-one -on -one situations with pass breakups and then the turnovers. Uh, you, you win the turnover battle, you always have a chance to win the games. Uh, not our best night statistically, but key plays and key situations when we had to have it to uh, to win. And that's that's really conference play down the stretch on the road. That's really all that matters. Pal Lewis down at KBNU, you coached a long time. A guy like Ike Larson, I mean, he said after the game, oh, it was exactly how the coaches told me to play this particular play. But you know, there are guys that just have playmaking ability. They just, they're they just different than some other players. And Ike started to show a little bit of that, isn't he? Yeah, he is. Uh, we joke about him either being just super calm in the, in the moment and just having a poise that most young guys don't, or – Maybe he's so young he doesn't even realize he should be nervous. I, I don't know which it is, but he's a very gifted player. He's gaining confidence, you know, by the play. Uh, the moment does not seem to be too big for him. He loves to compete, loves the game, uh, always plays the game with a big smile on his face, which is is makes the guys around him he better. Uh, and, and you know, we don't we don't win the game without the plays that he made Saturday night. He he came up big in, in really big situations and. Uh, I, I keep saying this. He's got a very bright future ahead of him here, and love the fact that he's a, you know, from the valley and, and loves being here, loves being a part of it. Uh, it. Was never in question that that this is what he wanted to do, and you see it on the field, in my opinion. To Brian Phillips, Bay Blue, USU Aggie News. The two scoring plays to the tight ends was that a concerted offensive effort <clears throat> to get the tight ends involved? Or was it just good routes by both kids? Uh, you know, Brian, you've been asking me about the tight end for a month, and we've been trying to get that <laughs> to you. Uh, 
you know, we've had I, – I want to get everybody involved. I, I would like to spread the ball around the field more. It's It's been a concerted effort from myself and our staff to try to be more balanced across the board and, and, and try to make defenses defend the entire field. We've had some very good things on tap the last couple of weeks that just either didn't pan out the way we want to on the field or – protection here or the look wasn't quite the way this week we had some good things going in we got the looks we wanted and it was well executed and we got a freebie on the second play of the game I mean that's a base play we've been running that that same play since we got here and, and they just the way they defended it they they made a mistake and and Sturzer and, and and um and Coop made them pay for it but it wasn't some unique design it's just part of what we do every game now there were some other plays that that, that we manipulated the tight end, and, and and I thought the guys did a great job. They've been phenomenal all year. Attitudes have been awesome, and, and we'd like to see them more and more involved as the backs as well in, in the throw game. We get a big one out of Calvin Tyler. So I think the more diverse we are in terms of who touches the ball, the, the more balanced we become as an offense, the more difficult we become to defend. Coach. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Trent. All right, I got it. Coach, Trentwood with Deseret News. I'm curious, you've won four of your last five games. Obviously, the start of the season did not go the way you wanted. But to bounce back and be 500, to have a real shot at making a bowl game, where have you seen the most improvement from this team in the latter half of the season? You know, we, we've we reduced mistakes when you talk about MAs, just situations where you just did not do what you were supposed to do in a defense, in an offensive scheme, those those still happen, and those happen with young guys, but we've reduced that number a great deal. We've reduced missed tackles, although we had a couple critical missed tackles this week, uh, one down on the goal line from Hunter Reynolds, who came right back the next series and, and created a turnover. But we've recruited missed tackles. We, we've reduced MAs. We've reduced drops. Um, you know, I, I think those are things that you just kind of have to continue to go out every day and work. And, and and get better and better and honestly get, just gain confidence so when the moment is there that you don't that you don't panic. Uh, every one of these guys, for the most part, when we got eleven seniors, a very small senior class. Most of these guys are playing not only this season but playing for you know the future, and some of them several years left. Uh, just the ability to go out and stay focused and continue to work every day is not a given. There's a lot of teams that when they're one and four and they don't recover. So I, I think just the resiliency and the willingness to work is maybe the best thing about this group. And that's not necessarily something we've improved upon, but something that we never gave up on. And, and that may be just as important. Anderson, Jason Turner from the Herald Journal. Uh, they're plus 10 in turnover margin. They forced a lot of turnovers, rarely give it up. How important is it that you guys have really shored that up over the last couple of weeks heading into this game? Well, it's going to be a huge, huge factor in this game. We're getting closer to the plus category, which would be awesome if we could get beyond that. Uh, two weeks in a row, we haven't turned over the ball over, and then to create the turnovers this week, difference in the game, it, it's going to take that. They're really, really good up on the front. Their their defensive front creates all kind of chaos in the backfield, and they tend to force those turnovers with pressure and sacks or forcing you to put the ball in harm's way. We got to stay away from that. And they've got a quarterback that's extremely mobile, very, very gifted at creating. And and it's hard to get a beat on him and and get to him. So which front's able to make the other quarterback most uncomfortable is going to be huge. We've got to protect the ball. We we cannot turn the ball over and expect to win against these guys. We've seen that in the past earlier this year where it killed us. We can't have that. And Proud that we've done better, but, you know, the job's not done yet. Coach Al, again, uh, the pressure on Cooper in the game the other night was very evident. Hawaii gave him a tough time, got sacked a lot. Were they his evaluation? Was he supposed to get rid of the ball before that or then evaluate his his game, which was his season high passing against Hawaii? Yeah, now he had two, two flat-out mistakes on his part where he's got to get rid of the ball. We had an RPO where he – squeeze the ball, and he's not going to get protection for a, a long period of time. He knows that, and he held on to it, and he knows he's got to dump it. We had an empty set where they brought the extra guy right down the middle, A-gap. He's got to see that and get the ball out. We had we had outlets available. He just didn't choose to take them. Those are things that, that experience for him. He's going to learn from those mistakes. 
they are, they are, I thought they were very active, willing to bring the extra guy. I uh, thought they played extremely well up front. Uh, knew that they would. When you watch tape, they've played very competitively at home. And there's just an energy level that they bring. Uh, I think they love playing there in front of their family. A very family-oriented type environment. Uh, and you could tell that that they were they were geeked up up front. It was senior night for them, I believe. And so you got all the things coming at you. But two of them he should have gotten away from for sure. I thought a third one that he – uh, could have dumped as well, and and we ended up getting a field goal out of the series. But um, there was some pressure that that you know we got beaten some one on one situations that that we obviously got to continue to work on. Hey, Coach Patrick Mayhorn with the Egg Ship. San Jose State has a lot of experience on defense, very old group. What is a, an already pretty creative coaching staff able to do with that much? veteran talent for that defense. Yeah, I think it gives you a lot of diversity. When you got guys you trust, you maybe you can carry a little bit more, be a little bit more exotic, creates problems for us up front to, to cover all that up. But they're they're dynamic on the D-line. They're twitchy and dynamic. One of the best that we saw last year, the guys you're talking about are back and played a lot of snaps. The ability to move and, and not end up with two guys in a gap, knowing guys are disciplined and, and mature are going to end up in the right spot. Uh, it creates a lot of flexibility for what they can do. And I think flexibility with dynamic players creates a lot of problems. Brian Phillips again. I think you only got five tackles out of the linebackers Saturday night. Um, is that concerning at all? And then a follow-up real quick. Do you think you may get MJ back Saturday night? I hope we get MJ back Saturday night. And he, he went with us. He worked out all weekend. He's feeling better every day. It's a day-to-day -day conversation between him and the docs when they're going to clear him to play. He's ready to play today, if you ask him. So it's going to come down to the docs. He's getting closer. I would like to think Saturday night he's lined up for us. Um, you know, statistically speaking, it's whoever and whatever's got to make plays. It really don't take a tremendous amount of – time looking into who had tackles and who didn't. I think schematically, uh, if we're where we're supposed to be and guys aren't missing tackles, then, you know that would be more probably, Brian, I would be more concerned with how many we missed. And we did miss a few, several of which would have stopped plays at the line of scrimmage that ended up being explosive uh, in, in terms of yardage. That's the ones that bother me the most, and those really came from, from a little bit of everybody. We had a D-line miss. We had a safety miss. We had a couple linebacker misses. Those are the ones that are probably a little bit more glaring to me than than how many tackles we had total, if that makes sense. Chanderson, Eric Franson with 106.9 The Fan. Can you update us on the status of Gervin Hall? As of right now, Gervin Hall is not on the roster. Uh, he was suspended indefinitely uh, a couple weeks ago and revisited that last week and, and just didn't feel like moving forward with him on the roster was the right thing to do. We'll we'll see if if that potentially brings him back to the to the roster at some point, but for right now he's not – not available and not with us. Uh, Jason Turner again. Um, they're only averaging three yards a carry rushing, but a lot of that is, I mean, Cordero's taken 34 sacks, which kind of blows me away considering how mobile and how athletic he is. Uh, so how, how would you define their rushing attack? How good do you feel their rushing attack is? Because, I mean, who knows what kind of weather we're going to get on Saturday night. It might be five degrees. And Thanks a lot. Have to run the ball. Thanks a lot for that. Um, yeah, you know, the games I've watched on them, I, I think they, they have the ability to run the ball extremely well. You're right. The numbers don't don't tell you that. And I, I think the reason he's got the sacks, number one, he's he's never out of a play. In his mind, the guy's got the feet to get out of any kind of mess. So you're right. He's taking some sacks that that some guys wouldn't. But you turn right back around the next play and he may be 20 yards downfield on you. So it, it, it comes um, – it comes with a silver lining, I think, for them that, yes, he's going to take a sack, but he's also going to create some really, really big plays. Uh, the games that I've watched, the really big games in, in tight games when they've they've won, they have run the ball well. I, I think you got a solid running back, and they're not afraid to run it. Their willingness to spread the ball around to everybody on the field, to me, works with that. I mean, they spread you out. They spread the ball around. And then the next thing you know, you got a light box, and they pop you with counter or zone. So I think the numbers are a little bit, a little bit uh, skewed because of the sacks. Uh, I think they're much better rushing the ball than than the numbers show. Jake Wilson, KSL.com. Um, you you mentioned that 
11 seniors graduating. Could you elaborate a little bit more about that group, maybe some of the individuals, specifically like Alfred and Holly? Well, well, hey, don't get rid of Holly yet. Holly's got another year left. Don't be trying to get rid of him yet. Uh, yeah, you're right. Shoot, man. I, I mean, you're going to start looking at our roster too close. Um, I don't want you taking anybody that's still got time left. I, I just been – I've been really pleased, you know, to take – this is a, a class that, um, you know, six guys were left from uh, other other recruiting classes with either Matt or, or Gary. I don't know exactly how they all got here. We brought five transfers in to fill in the class to, to create 11. You want double that number if, if, at minimum. You want, you know, 20 plus seniors in each group if you can. So it's a little unique that it's a small class and a blended class, but They've been phenomenal. They they helped us win a championship a year ago. They fought through one and four to to put us in a position here down the stretch to be bowl eligible. They've been through a lot. Uh, they they some of these guys have been through two other head coaches, including myself. Uh, to have three head coaches in your collegiate career that's that's not easy. That's a lot of transition, a lot of new, a lot of new personalities, uh, and, and they've they've just continued to come to work every day. So really pleased with them, uh, Alfred Dolph. Uh, you know, Hunter's a guy that we brought in. And, you know, Cobb coming in for one year. It's a really – you know, we got – I got seven years out of Logan Bonner. And, and you know, it, I know it ended in an injury. Just a really great group of dudes that that um, bring a ton of positive to the room and bought into what we asked them to do and are going to leave with a championship at least one. If, if you know, I'm not sure some of them maybe were a part of some other big, big games and, and, and championships before, but – uh, like the fact that they're leaving here with at least one championship and love to love to find a way to get them to a bowl here down the stretch. Cal, one more. Um, San Diego State threw the ball against uh, San Jose, and they don't normally do that. Can you learn something from that film, or can, are they really hard to run the ball against? Yeah, they're, they're hard to run the ball against. Their front is, is the strength of their team. Uh, they're hard to throw it against, too, if you're not careful, because they can rush the passer extremely well. We... Um, we found out last year, I mean, Logan, Logan had to get picked up off the turf a lot, and we were down 14 to nothing. Now, we played a great defensive game against them last year. We got things going eventually offensively the way we needed to, but it was not easy. Uh, that You're right, San Diego State typically does pound the ball at you, but that was not easy for them. They did a really good job of winning in one-on-one -on -one situations in the back end uh, and, and creating explosive throws. So um, we're going to have to be balanced, protect the ball, protect the quarterback, and take our shots where we can, I don't think we can abandon the run. It may not be pretty, but we have to stay balanced. Patrick Mayhorn again. Are we fair to assume that the guys who are not being recognized this weekend are returning or using their COVID year or next season? Uh, yeah, I mean, the the, the guys that – like I said, we're going to have 11 guys. The only only underclassman that has that insinuated or, or indicated that he's – planning on not playing a senior year would be Jacob South. The rest of those guys are all just preparing to to come back. So I haven't really looked at the list that that in depthly. Uh the guys that are that are going to be recognized are the guys that are playing their their final season of eligibility. And Jacob South is the only one I think that has a year left that is is kind of just planning on going and being a grown up and raising kids. So um that that's kind of what we expect. Anything else, guys? Thanks. Garrett Franson with 106.9 The Fan. I just uh, Your reaction when you got that uh, interception return for touchdown, running it back right towards that uh, Aggie uh, fans that were there. Did you have any family there or others that uh, were in attendance that you got to run it back to? Uh, yeah. Actually, I pointed at all my family. I had about 20 of my family members there, so it was pretty dope being, being able to go in that corner and see them like that. So. Brian Priest, KSLSports.com. Looking back at that pick six interception, it, it almost looked like you were running the route for the right wide receiver. And you mentioned post game that that was uh, an alignment that you had seen in uh, film study. Can you elaborate on that? Uh, yeah, really just like I said after the game, I mean, we studied the splits. Coach Bond is uh, really hard on us for that. And I saw they were split outside, so we knew what routes or what routes that could come off that. And so I just knew he was going to run the out route. And so I just jumped the route and just, it was history from there. So. Jason Walker with Cash Valley Daily. Uh, 
Just what's the season been like for you where you start out, you're mainly a special teams guy, play a couple of snaps on defense, but now you know, you're, you're starting at safety on defense. What's that progression been like for you? Uh, it's been good. Like, I'm, I've been prepared. Um, I don't want to say I knew this was going to happen, but like I knew like if it's like the next man, next man up mentality. So just got to be prepared. And when your time comes, you got to gotta take advantage of it and do the best you can. Hi, Cal Lewis. Uh, I, I, one question I didn't ask you last week when we talked. Yeah. You blocked a couple of kicks early in the year. Yep. Have you noticed since then that when you get on a punt play, everybody's going, there's 19. Yeah. Or do, do you notice that now everybody watches you more on those kind of deals? And and how close have you come since then? Uh, Yeah, that's actually kind of funny. I was talking to somebody from Hawaii um, after the game, and he's just like, we keyed, we've keyed you on every special teams, every punt. So, yeah, teams have, teams have definitely picked up that we try, we're trying to get a block. And so now I just – I don't know. It's it's kind of it's kind of sad that I can't block anymore, but it's 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 cool. It's all right. Hi, Brian Priest again. What does it, it feel like? I see you smile a little bit when you're talking about teams game planning around you. But what does that feel like for you as, as such a young player to know that other teams, coaches, players are noticing your ability and what you're able to do on the field? Um, it's it's pretty cool being being uh i guess noticed like you said i guess um i don't know it's just cool to be able to have that type have that type of impact on people jake ellis utah statesman um just with it being senior night and all uh can you just tell us like the impact this senior class has had on you and then um how badly do you guys want to get that win for them that final game in the mav um it's it's very important for the seniors we're gonna try to send them off the right way we're going to do everything we can this week to uh, game prep and game plan and just come out Saturday and play the best we can and hopefully we come out with a win. So it's very important. Jake Nielsen, KSL.com. I'm curious, what's it like playing in cold weather games? And just from a, a physicality standpoint, how much more will and effort do you need to have to be able to, to match that when it's you're hitting people and it's sub- 32 degrees outside. Right. Um, I don't I don't know. It's really just your adrenaline's pumping and you don't really recognize that it's too cold out because I mean we're running the whole game, of course. So but I don't know. When we're on the bench, we can definitely feel it. But I feel like on the field, like it's just another game and I feel like we're we do just fine. Hey Cal Lewis again, another one. You you probably you didn't get back from Hawaii till late, so mm -hmm. I think sometimes Sundays you guys do spend a lot of time starting to get ready for the week. What is this kind of speed up? Can you talk a little bit about getting prepared for San Jose and their passing attack? A guy that we played last year from Hawaii was their quarterback when we played him last year, but getting ready for this. Um, we've been we've been uh, actually since yesterday we got home at like two p.m. So we've really just been game planning already since then. So I feel like. We're still ahead. We're not behind at all, and we're gonna have meetings um, throughout this week and practice. So I think I think we'll be good. Hi, right, Brian Phillips, Big Blue USU Aggie News. With this being your second year in the program, how comfortable do you feel um, as a piece of the defensive scheme? Like, how familiar are you with the playbook and so on? Um, I'm pretty familiar. I still got a lot to learn, of course, but I feel like. From last year to this year, like I definitely know the playbook a lot better, and I feel like any play call that he calls, I can um, go out there and execute it, and just be be who I am and try to make plays. Trent Wood, Deseret News. Coach Anderson's been talking a lot about how much making a bowl game would mean for this team. I'm curious, from your perspective, what would it mean for you? What would it mean for your teammates to play in a bowl this year? Um, it would be awesome. Like. I, unfortunately, I wasn't able to go last year, but so this would be my first bowl game. But we're we just that that's that's our goal. That's our goal, and uh, we all want it. So we just got to put in the work. And if we don't put in the work, then of course we're not gonna be able to get there. But it, it'll be it'll be cool if we can uh, get a bowl game. Stan, you've already looked at San Jose some then yesterday. What do you see of their uh, their attack offensively? Um, they're good offensively. They got they got a lot of weapons. Their receivers are pretty good. So we just got to come out and really just play lockdown defense and have minimum mistakes and just 
keep the quarterback contained and and I think we'll be good. Jason Walker with Cash Rally Daily. Uh, you guys get back to 500 this week, and what's it like finally, you know, be back to that after you know one and four start? Um, yeah, obviously a, a rough start to the season. I think it's good to finally be back, having an even record. Hopefully, we can finish these last two weeks right and finish with a winning record. So that's the plan right now. <clears throat> for Jason Turner from the Herald Journal, um, how important is it for you to have a, I mean, how nice is it that you've had a couple of games back under your belts heading into this game against a San Jose defense that puts a tremendous amount of pressure on opposing quarterbacks? Yeah, I'm glad we play San Jose and Boise at the end of the year. Gives me a couple games to get some more experience because these are two really good teams we have to finish out the year. So I think the experience I've gained so far this year is good for me, and I plan on finishing out strong and hopefully having two of my best games. So, For Al Lewis from KBDNU here in town, uh, it, just to me, it looked like you threw the ball more vertically against Hawaii. Was that the way they played, or did you have the intent you wanted to do that? Um, I mean, I always want to – we always want to have big plays, but – I think there was just more opportunities against Hawaii, and I feel two of our touchdowns were sort of busted coverages, so I think that was them sort of making mistakes, and we we capitalized on it. So had a couple big plays, and I think we were just ready for the opportunity when, when they made some mistakes with their defense. Jacob Nielsen, KSL.com. Obviously, it's senior night for San Jose State, or against San Jose State. I want to ask you about Logan Bonner. What, what's he been for you? Has he, has he been a good mentor for you this season and prior? And what's your relationship like with him? Um, really good friends with Logan on and off the field in meetings. I'm around him all day, every day. He's in the quarterback meetings just – giving his input, he's sort of turned into like a GA at this point since he can't be on the field. So it's like having another coach in the room or just being around and he has experience and has been around college football a long time. So just when he feels like he can help, he's right there to help any of us out with whoever's in or whoever's playing. So it's been good having him around even though he's not on the field. For Trent Wood with Deseret News, what was the hardest part about missing those games with concussion, and how quickly do you feel you got back into maybe the form that you were before the injury? Um, I think the hardest part was just, like especially at Wyoming, just being there on the sideline, watching the game with my body totally healthy, just knowing that I could help the team out in that game or in certain situations, so... I think it's tough just feeling like your body's healthy and feeling like you could be out there ready to go, but just knowing that you need to take time off and get your brain right because you need that for life after football. Anything else for Cooper? Just one more, uh, Jake Ellis, Utah Statesman. Cooper, um, with Brian Cobbs coming in, it's also a senior night for him. Uh, what what did he do coming into this program and, and leading that wide receiver group? Um, I think since the day he got here, he's led by example, just working hard every day. And he really dove into the offense when he got here, learned everything really fast. and. Then obviously this season he's helped our team out a lot, making a bunch of big plays and really being there when whenever the offense needs him. So it's been awesome for me and the offense as a whole just to have him and out there making big plays every week. So it's it's been awesome with with Cobbs out there. It's one more too, Coop uh, Al Lewis from the radio station again. But Hawaii did pressure you quite a bit and you got sacked a couple of times. Will that help you? Do you think in a game where San Jose is known for that? It is. Um, yes. And honestly, I think probably more than half the sacks from Hawaii were 
my fault just holding the ball too long or pulling it when I shouldn't have. So I think a lot of the sacks from Hawaii were on me, not really the O-line or anything else like that. So I think it was a good learning opportunity for me just knowing when I need to hit the check down or when I have to hit the hot route. So just being more aware of the pressure and I feel like San Jose is going to see that and they'll try to do the same thing. So I'll be ready for it.